Take a look at this video here coming in from the U.S. Coast Guard as a Coast Guard Air Station Miami helicopter crew rescued a man Thursday about 30 miles off of Longboat Key right after Milton did strike. The air crew brought the man to Tampa General Hospital for further care after he was found clinging to a cooler wearing a life jacket, and this was about 1.30 p.m. local time. Airplane and helicopter crews from Air Station Clearwater currently deployed to Aviation Training Center Mobile for storm avoidance, and Air Station Miami launched at approximately 5.30 that morning to search for the missing captain. Monday, the captain of the fishing vessel, Captain Dave, reported to Coast Guard Sector St. Petersburg uh, watchstanders there that he and a crew member were disabled about 20 miles off of John's Pass. A Coast Guard Station Sand Key rescue boat crew and an Air Station Clearwater rescue helicopter crew arrived there on the scene. The air crew hoisted the two people and brought them back to Air Station Clearwater in good condition. The vessel was left adrift and salvage arrangements were to be made. Now, Wednesday around noon, the owner of the fishing vessel, Captain Dave, reported to Coast Guard Sector St. Petersburg watch standards that uh, the captain went back out to the boat to make repairs at about 3 that morning and had not checked back in. Watch standards were able to make radio contact with the captain who reported the rudder was fouled with a line and became disabled during his transit back to port. Now at this point you can see what happens next as that captain known as Captain Dave was rescued by the Coast Guard holding on to that cooler or ice chest that you see on the screen. Now those who actually rescued him were interviewed by the Coast Guard that sent us this video of the interview and I do want to play it for you right now. So we got sent over to the west coast of Florida early this morning, and uh, we did a couple overflights. We checked out Sanibel and Captiva, just knowing the history with Hurricane Ian two years ago. Um, we wanted to see if there was flooding there first before we repositioned to Punta Gorda to get gas. After we were at the FBO for a couple hours, we got a call that us and another 65 were getting launched out of Punta Gorda to go to look for a PIW and they told us the story of um, the boat that Captain Dave uh, had been out there and they transitioned from looking for an overdue to a person in the water. They had a description, uh, red life jacket, black shirt, black pants. Um, so we each got search patterns and got sent out um, to go look for him. It was probably 30 miles offshore Sarasota and um, once we got out there, we had some patterns and there was some confusion because it's really non-standard for us to have two helicopters go out and run the same search pattern. And so we had some confusion with Sector where at a certain point they wanted us to just go back to Sarasota and land and wait for the CASA to bring in a replacement crew. And as we were sorting out the details, we started to get an alert on our uh, direction finding equipment and our swimmer actually asked us a question about how the equipment works, if we can see the difference between an aircraft or a personal locator beacon or something like that. And it really prompted us to just deconflict with the other helicopter and trace that line, essentially. And how it worked, Landon was sitting in the right seat, so he has a better recollection of this part, but <clears throat> we're following, I switched to a, homing beacon, I start to make a turn and our swimmer is like, hey, you guys see that? And then Landon, I don't know if you want to take it over, but. Yeah, basically the way the direction finder works is different equipment gives us signals in different, um, in different ways. So this one was updating about every minute. And what happens is where you're at in space and time, when it gets a hit from the marker, it'll give you a bearing needle relative to where you're heading at that moment. So as we were turning to fly back, we started honing in on the getting the signal, a stronger signal. We got a relative bearing marker in the opposite direction, so we turned around, started going towards the um, last vector, the last bearing line that we received, and making sure we were um, 
deconflicted, like Ian said, with the other helo. They were in the pattern area. We were just kind of flying the bearing line that we received off the direction finder. And as we were trucking that way, our swimmer noticed um, some debris or an object about two o'clock uh, on the aircraft. And it looked like just a, a big object, a silhouette. Uh, as we were approaching, we started to make out, oh, it's got a little orange color on like a white object. Um, and then, yeah, as we got closer, we saw the arms reach up in the air and um, realized at the moment that, that we had found the survivor uh, floating, clinging up to a uh, big fishing cooler. Um, so at that point, we marked the position, started a right-hand turn and a descent to get down into a hover and uh, started our process, our hoisting process there. Oh man, we were ecstatic. So I think we do, uh, we do a lot of searches for people in the water, vessel, overdue vessels, things like that. So to get, uh, to have a success story like this is not as common as we'd like it. And so, I mean, we were all very, very excited. We couldn't believe it, honestly, that he was okay. And, um, and then at that point, just, kind of fall back on our training and do everything, go through all of the procedures and checklists that we do and we train every every day, uh, every week. And it was it was very smooth. Put the swimmer down. Um, he was able to assess the survivor, cut him loose. His, his uh, cord off the personal locator beacon had kind of somewhat trapped him to the cooler. It wrapped around his one of his limbs. So the swimmer was able to cut him free, got him in the quick drop, and then we were able to hoist him up in the helicopter and uh, bring him into Tampa General Hospital. It's funny because our swimmer was actually on our way out to the case. He was telling us about this story that he read where there was a guy in Montauk off the coast and it was a Coast Guard story where one of the last legs of the search pattern, they find this guy and like the end of his survival window, hoist this guy like it's a miracle that they found him. And he was telling us about how him reading that helps him focus on these sorts of cases where you're just kind of staring at the open ocean. And it's a lot of math that determines where we're gonna go and search because we have limited resources, limited fuel. So to target where we're supposed to go is, is always kind of a um, mixed bag and so, Oftentimes, when you're just staring into nothing, you're like it's it's hard to stay focused. Um, but you hear about these miracles, and it was just funny that the swimmer was talking about it, like during the flight. Oh, uh, great story of perseverance, crew going with their gut and staying out there, and uh, ending with a success story, a miracle. So, um, so kind of two things. There, it's really awesome to have great crew, um, great crew resource management, because I felt like today was one of those times where everyone's just kind of firing on all cylinders. Like the swimmer prompted us to talk about the DF more. He had the initiative to ask us a question, which prompted us going into this rabbit hole. And then even just everyone had a good attitude and wanted to be out there and wanted to do something to help. And so it was great because all that kind of came together to where our initiative resulted in us finding a guy that's been holding on to a cooler for 24 hours, like through a hurricane. Um, that was pretty special for me to think about. And then as far as the boater safety stuff goes, the life-saving equipment really does work. Um, as we were coming into a hover, you could see the strobe off the top of his e -perb. We It got us to within a mile or two of his position based on the satellite data we received. And then we could use that homing signal to end up locating him where we just took him down the right side of the aircraft and saw him. So having that equipment that works and um, it really increases your likelihood of us finding you if you're out there. Yep. It's priceless. Survival equipment's priceless. So you spend the money, buy the correct um, personal flotation device, buy the correct uh, locator beacon, because it'll save your life.